Okay, okay. So this King Richard review is here. Let's get into it. I've got a lot of things to talk about. I'm going to give a synopsis and I'm going to give my opinion. I'm not going to go play by play because the movie is two hours and 25 minutes. Okay. Hey, what's going on? It's your girl, Miss Ann Little Cole. I'm coming to you straight out of NYC on this quiet, early Wednesday morning. Sorry, I had to yawn. You know, it was early. And I went to bed real early, too. So I woke up an hour ago. But anyway, I saw King Richard on Sunday on HBO Max. And... Usually when I watch a movie on HBO Max, I'll pause it and then I'll watch it, you know, a couple hours later. But I watched the whole thing from the beginning, middle to end. And I got to say, it was, for the most part for me, it was really, really good in terms of the script. But Will Smith's performance, in my opinion, was great. And I'm going to say he's definitely going to get that Oscar nomination and hopefully this will be the win for him. And I'm going to get into that later. But let's get into actually what this movie is about. So as we all know, Serena and Venus Williams or Venus and Serena Williams, because that's how it is presented in the movie. They are young girls living in Compton and they have in in the movie, they have three older sisters and they come from a two parent home. They have a mother who's a nurse. And they have a father who works security at nights. Now, they live in the neighborhood. They live in the comp. They live in the. They live in the city of Compton, which is you could say in L.A. County. But even though they're homeowners and they have jobs, they're not the most financially stable family because. They have a lot of children. And also, let's keep it real. Compton in 1990s was totally different from Compton in the 1950s. And it's different from Compton now in the 2020s. You know, if you lived in Compton in the 90s, not only was you considered to be poor, but you were living in an area that wasn't pretty much real estate valued. And it was one of the most dangerous cities in America. Now, let's talk about the father. Richard Williams is a father that is from the deep south, Shreveport, Louisiana. He does have education, but it's only to high school. He worked. He had a previous marriage that produced six kids, but they don't tell you that in the movie. But he actually married Oracine, which is his second wife, as well as Oracine is is sec- this is her second marriage to Richard. So they're, they're both on a second marriage. And so far, it comes off as successful, but in towards the end, you're going to see the cracks. So what happens is that Richard has a plan. He has a 78-page plan where he is determined to make something out of his daughters, his biological daughters, Venus and Serena. And he picked tennis because tennis wasn't a sport that black people dominated. It wasn't like basketball. It wasn't like football or baseball, nor was it like ice skating, um, volleyball, things like that. It was something that brought in money, you know? And also too, women could play tennis. And also the girls, they actually enjoyed playing a sport. So it wasn't like he forced it upon them. It's something that they really, really loved and they were really good at it. So he takes them to the, to the, to the, to the park in Compton. And he has these signs that if you, if you plan to fail, then you fail. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail, you know, inspirational signs and so forth. And he films a lot of their their sessions, you know, their practices, and he's shopping around to white, rich men who 
not only play tennis leisure, like as a, you know, as a sport, you know, in terms of just, you know, fun, but also who are benefactors of the sport of tennis. So he goes to the tennis clubs in Los Angeles and they're not really interested. But what he does is he actually meets this man who is the coach of the iconic John Mackerel. So if you know who that man is, he's like a, a, a tennis icon. And he's a person that really has, you know, been considered to be one of the greatest tennis players of all time. And yes, he's also known for his temper, but that's another story here and there. But anyway, what happens is that he speaks to the coach and he tells him, listen, you know, I want you to coach Serena and Venus. I want you to pretty much, you know, two of them. I don't have any money, but listen, I have the options. And if you would like to, you know, sponsor them, that would be wonderful. So the coach, I know his first name was Paul. I can't think of his last name. He says, I will actually do it, but first you got to show me their skills. So they demonstrate and they're really, 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 really great. And he says, okay, so I can do this. I can coach one, but only one. And his name is Paul Cohen. He says, I can coach one, but I can't coach both. So he picks Venus, obviously, because Venus is older and she's in that age bracket where she could also do those tours. I mean, those, um, those, those, um, those games, those coaching games, those championship tournaments. V- Serena at this time, she's only nine years old, but Venus is around about like 10 or 11. So v- Serena feels some kind of way, but you're going to see later on why it, it, pans out that way and it's an excellent point so he gets them to basically be you know gets venus to be coached meanwhile serena is coached by her mother or a scene and or a scene even though she's a nurse she's good at what she does now richard did not play tennis like that growing up he grew up in the deep south where he was abused not only by the cops but also by the kkk and his father was a punk his father saw his son being beat up by white kids who were possibly can't clan connected and he ran off. He didn't even defend for himself. So he always said that he would never run away from his children or his responsibilities. And I got to say, Richard Williams is a real man. Now, moving on with Paul Cohen. He and Richard Williams clashed because... There are things that Paul wants to do with Venus in terms of the branding, in terms of putting her in going pro. He doesn't want his daughters to go pro. And he doesn't want his daughters to go pro because he doesn't want to put that pressure on them. He doesn't really want them to go to pro until they are adults. And he doesn't really understand, like, in the game, they got to go pro. Otherwise, what's the point of all this? But what happens is that he doesn't want them to fizzle out before they hit the age to really understand not only the game itself in terms of the business, but also to be able to make that money, the million dollars, the million dollar endorsement deals, being able to win the U.S. Open, Wimbledon, you know, the Olympics, things of that nature. So what happens is, He meets these guys and they're like public relations people and their names are Laird Stabler and um, the other guy, I think his name is Vic Braden. I could be wrong. So what happens is they meet and it, it goes bad. It goes bad. It goes left. And once that happens, Richard takes Venus home and Paul Cohen visits the family and he sits him down and he's like, listen, you know, why are you doing this, Richard? Why do you not want your daughter to go pro? You know, she was already competing in the, 
in the um, championships in Los Angeles. And they're like, you know, why are why you don't want to, you know, have your daughter go pro? And he's like, because I don't want her to basically fizzle out. I don't want her to be seen as like, you know, just some kind of product. Like she's not ready to, to, to do these tournaments. She's not. And he's like, that's the rules of the game. So then Richard says, you know, I'll take it here and I'll just go and, you know, get somebody else or I'll do it myself. So Paul Cohen, he exits the movies and he doesn't come back, so to speak. So Richard ends up doing it. And before he leaves, Paul basically warns him that you're destroying the girl's lives. And before he leaves their home, Venus talks to him because they had a very good relationship. And Venus basically talks to him and she says, you know, I heard the whole conversation. And Paul tells her, you are going to be great. Okay. Don't ever forget that. And pretty much don't forget everything that I taught you. But I got to go. And she understood. And, you know, she had him. A, she slapped him a high five. And, you know, she moved on from there. Now, Serena at this time is in competitions. She's in tournaments. But because her sister is very good. She wins silver, but there's a scene that's very important. And the scene that's important is when they both win the trophies, Serena has the silver, Venus has the gold, and they switch it out. And Serena, Venus says, you know, Serena says, I'll take the gold. And Venus says, I like silver better anyway. And I thought that was important scene because it tells you that even though in the beginning, Serena, Venus was the winner. She was the one that was getting all the trophies, the, the gold trophies. But really, that switch tells you that Serena was going to be where she is, the greatest of all time. That she was going to outshine her sister and all of them. But I'm going to get into that. So what happens is we see before they meet Coach Rick Mancy, I'm going to jump back. I'm going to jump back to two scenes, and I did this on purpose. The first scene is the hoodlums that are in the park. They pretty much like to harass Yatunde. Now, Yatunde is a sister that basically ended up getting shot in the head in 2003 by a bunch of thugs but the story isn't really about her but they do mention her because she's the oldest and she's on the honor roll and she graduates high school as a valedictorian what also happens is that the thugs want a piece of Yatunde and Yatunde pretty much doesn't want to be interested in them but the father is protecting her and he, the, the guy says something like, you know, the first time it's like, you know, I want to see your daughter Yatunde. So he doesn't say anything, you know, he tells him, you know, just leave because he don't really want any problems. Then the second encounter is like, you know, me and my homies, we going to do a train on Yatunde. And that's when he hits the, the guy who says it in the face with a racket. But instead of the guy, you know, just backing down and respecting the elders, they not only call him an old man, they basically stomp him and they fight him because, you know, that's gang assault. Now, I think that they were Crips because I saw a lot of black and then I saw like images like navy blue. So I think they were mostly Crips. But anyway, they beat him up real bad. But it doesn't deter him from the goal, which is to make Venus and Serena the greatest tennis players. The third time he encounters them is pretty much when they're at, he's leaving the parking lot. He gets his gun 
He leaves the he leaves the not the park. He leaves the, car, he leaves the um what's the thing? He leaves the park and he goes to the store and he gets out of the minivan. Now he comes there to kill him. But just when he's about to cross the street to kill that dude, somebody does a drive-by on him. And then Richard runs back because he has the gun in his hand and he don't want nobody to see him because, you know, he's a black man. They'll pin it on him. We don't know who kills him, but I don't think any of us really cared, especially when you say you're going to run a train on a, a teenage girl. We don't have compassion for you, honestly, bro. Yeah. So anyway, in the story, the guys, they really didn't have a beef with Richard Williams. So they actually start to look out for Richard, which I thought was kind of fake and phony. But anyway, what also happens is that there's a neighbor that they have in their community. And her name is Miss, I believe her name is Miss Betty. Her name is Miss Betty. And she's really an annoying ass bitch. And the reason why I say it like that is because she basically sees Venus and Serena um, passing out, not passing out, but dropping off yellow pages. And she tells them, girls, come over here, even though they're going to give her one. And she tells them, you know, I don't like the way your father has you working. You know, you're too young to basically be working like this. He got you basically carrying all these heavy you know, books and so forth. You should be playing. You all are kids. So they don't really want to talk back to the elder, but they don't want to, you know, they don't really want to go against their father. So they keep it neutral. Now, the father, Richard Williams, sees this and he basically tells us something that I thought was really, really important, which is why don't you mind your business and mind to your daughter who's on the corners? So she wasn't keeping her daughter, Miss Strickland is her name, Betty Strickland. She wasn't minding her daughter who was on the corner and it gave the illusion that her daughter was either a crackhead, a drug addict, selling drugs or a prostitute. I think her daughter was a prostitute. So what she does to get back at them is she calls CPS. And when she calls CPS, it backfires on her because CPS after they see how well Richard and Oracine raised the daughters, they like, listen, we don't want any trouble. We just got a call. That's why we're here. We got a call from a neighbor across the street. And Oracine knocks on the door and basically lets her know, this is my first time coming over here, Betty, and this better be my last. Okay? And you don't see nor hear from Betty Strickland again. Now, fast forward to when they meet Rick Mancini. Rick Mancini is the man who ends up making Venus great. As well as Serena. But remember, like I said, this is about Venus. So what happens is Mancini travels all the way from Florida to California to basically see the girls play and he meets them and he really likes what he sees, especially with how Richard handled the girls. And so he's pretty much, you know, enamored. So he pretty much gives them a contract. He meets with them and he says, listen, I will coach you girls for free. I will house you pay for everything, but I get, 10% of future, no, 15% of future earnings. And so Richard Williams says, okay, I got a contract for you too. So he shows him his contract and he was like, huh? Like people don't give me contracts, but you know, he takes it in stride and Rick and him, they have a very good relationship, but he wants the girls to go pro and Richard doesn't want them to go pro. And that's a conflict that they have throughout the, st the movie. And what occurs is that 
you will see that when the the legendary interview, when he interrupts the journalist who asks Serena, who asks Venus, are you good? Are you ready? Are you in your prime? Are you able to beat them? I can be anyone. And he's, he, he questions her. And then Richard Williams as well says, how can you do this to this little black girl? You're lowering her self-esteem. You keep asking the same question over and over. She, she answered it once before. Just leave her alone. So Rick Mancy doesn't like that approach because he's not used to parents being, you know, that all up in the face of people who are in the industry that have the ability to make them to present people who are sports players to look great. And he basically tells them, you know, these are my daughters. You know, I know you're the coach, but these are my daughters. I'm not going to let anybody make my daughters look bad or make their self-esteem lower. You know, these are black girls. And, you know, it's hard as for them as it is just being that. I'm not going to allow somebody to keep asking my daughter the same question over and over again and then to damage her self-esteem so that when she plays out there, she'll lose and she'll crash and burn. So then Rick Mancy says, oh, yeah, about that, I really want to take the girls to go pro. He doesn't want them to go pro. They're not ready. He doesn't want Venus to go pro. So after three scenes, they have a conflict. And then Rich is like, you know, I think we're going to quit. I'm ready to pretty much, you know, do things on my own. And Rick Man says, you can't do it. You need me. The girls need me. And so Oracine finds out and she goes off. And she was like, you know, why do you think I'm staying with you? Why do you think I'm still married to you? I'm not in it because of, of love, because it was you, because that fizzled a long time ago. I'm here because of the girls, because I see that this is more beneficial to them. I could have been left you. You always high and mighty. You always thinking that you some kind of God. You know, you always, you know, want to do things your way. And you don't even take it into consideration of the people's feelings. You know, think about our daughters and how hard they worked. She wasn't focusing on Nancy, but she was thinking on him. But I'm going to say I didn't like that scene because I felt that scene was very pro-feminist. And even though I understood the character, I just felt like, they had to have that one scene where the black woman was talking down to the black man. You know, I didn't like that part. You know, they could have did it a different type of way. But, hey, you know, it's Hollywood and they had to sell the movie. So, you know, it is what it is. But moving along from that, he basically, you know, realizes, OK, fine. I will talk to Serena and ask if she wants to go pro. So, I mean, not seeing him, Serena and Venus. And Venus says, I'm ready. I've been ready. So he gives in. Then they meet the day before the tournament. And the tournament's in Oakland. So they meet with a Nike representative. And he offers them $3 million deal. And they're like, okay, Serena, you read the, I mean, that's Serena Venus. See, Serena is very, the one that's always there now. So it's like Venus is kind of like an afterthought. So forgive me if I keep saying Serena. Venus, Venus, Venus. So they give Venus the contract and Venus reads it. And she's like, I'm not really interested in it. I'm not interested. And she doesn't really tell them why so much. But I think she keeps it to herself. But I also think that she, for that one moment in the movie, she wants to have control of her life. It's that control. Like, you adults have been running this game. I'm going to run this game at this moment. And that was brilliant on her part because Nike ups it the next day to 4 million if she wins because they saw her play the first time and she won and she, she was beating pros. But what happens is this girl whose last name is Victoria and she's from Spain and the girl initially is losing but she holds out by going to the bathroom now I don't care I think she used some kind of steroids because she was fixing her her sneaker some kind of way and I think she had something in that sneaker I think she had some kind of pills in her foot inside that sneaker and probably had it in a little plastic bag because you know this is 94 
94, you, you couldn't detect things like you can now in 2021. So she ended up going to the bathroom, held out for like almost 20 minutes, comes back, and it not only um, basically causes Venus to really lose her power, she beats her and she wins a tournament. But even though she beats her, so Venus is still the top person because Venus is the one that ends up with the fans and she ends up with the endorsement from Reebok at the age of 15. She becomes a multimillionaire signing a $12 million deal. Now, that's how it ends, but I want to go back to the day of the tournament. Richard talks to Serena and he tells her, Serena, I know that you want to be out there like your sister is, but right now you can't. You see, Serena is going, Venus is going to be number one in the world. But you, Serena, you're going to be the greatest of all times. And she turns around and she looks at her father. He said, you see, I planned it that way. You know, Venus is the oldest, so I had her to go first. You know, she's going to be, you know, number one. But you, you're going to be the greatest. That's why I had you practicing all them years, you know, because I wanted you to be hungry and I wanted you to want it real bad so that when you were ready, you're going to be ready and you're going to be the greatest player ever. And we all know she becomes that. And that's why that scene with the trophy is the most important. But people, I'm sure, missed it because Serena has the silver, Venus has the gold. I switch it. And then they like silver better, Venus. And Serena, I'm not, I don't think she said she likes gold better anyway. But she might have said that too. I could be wrong because there was a lot of stuff in the movie. It's, it was a lot of scenes in there. Now, I'm going to give you my opinion of this movie. It was great. In terms of the inspiration of seeing two black girls being groomed by their father, biological father and a black man. You don't see movies like that. I don't think I've ever seen a movie like that. And another thing too, he wasn't abusive with it. It wasn't on some MK Ultra mind control shit. It wasn't on this, you know, I'm doing this because I, 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 I. It was them, them, them. The girls, the girls, the girls. And that to me was more important than anything. And you can see the sincerity in Richard Williams. And if you notice, Serena and Williams, uh, Serena and Venus, they don't have any like tragedies were falling upon them, you know, everybody goes through their, you know, trials and tribulations, but they're not goofy. If you know what I mean, they haven't done goofy stuff like, okay, Serena, she has the white husband. Okay. Venus. I know she dates a white man, but they don't have they never really tried to really, really, really be white. If you know what I mean. If you if you understand where I'm coming from with this, you know, they've always remembered who they are and where they came from. You have other parents in the business of show business because sports is also part of show business. Let's keep it real. Where they will make their kids big. They'll make their kids great. But then they'll want their children to leave their whole identity behind. And it's like, listen, you're black on paper, but you're no longer black when it comes to experience. Now, I got to give props to Will Smith. Will Smith did his thing. And as always, he did his thing in the act in this movie. Now, this movie, he's going to get the Oscar nomination. This is an Oscar nominated movie. But will he win the gold finally? I will say yes. I would say for the most part, yes. 
But it's up to us. We got to basically do the promotions for it because now many people don't notice about the Academy Awards. It's no longer just the actors campaigning. It's also the people tweeting, talking about it on social media, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, um, things of that nature on your blogs and so forth. They looking at it from the terms of the people now. Also, the Academy is set up different. You no longer have an all-white, practically all-white Academy board that votes. You have many people of color, and many of them who are color are black, and they're on the Academy for 12 years, okay? So their term is over by 2029. So you have a lot of people on there. You have the, the woman, um, Anika Noni Rose, you have a couple of others and that's a really good look, which is why a lot of black people have been winning Oscars since 2017. Also, you got to take into account that this will be his third Oscar nomination. He should have won for the pursuit of happiness, but everybody was, was, was pushing, you know, the last King of Scotland, which in my opinion was not as good as The Pursuit of Happiness. There was nothing inspirational about that movie. Unless you are a person who aspires to be a global dictator, nobody would want to be like, I mean, da-da. nobody, okay? But The Pursuit of Happiness, in my opinion, was a movie. And if you saw that movie, that was one of the greatest performances in the history of cinema. That's how I feel, and that's how I see it. It was so inspirational. But... Hopefully, this is the one. If not, then I don't know if he's going to ever win, you know. But also, I want to give a shout out to Anjanou Ellis. She's an excellent actress as well. You know, she was in the movie The Help. She was in my favorite show, um, Lovecraft Country. She also done. Um, she also played Anne Petway in the Carlina White story. She's also very good with biopics. And hopefully she gets a nomination as well because she's long overdue for one. And as for the young ladies who played Venus and Serena Williams, they were excellent, not just in their performance, but they also played tennis that wasn't body doubles. And also, too, they matched the girls well. You know, there's a saying that actors in Hollywood, when it comes to black actors, they just throw us in any old story. And they always... Have us not looking like the family. You know, you'll take two dark skinned parents and then they have these high yellow children that look biracial. And it looks really goofy because you know damn well that that ain't their, their they, they, they couldn't be their parents. Or you'll have two light skinned parents produce this child that's really dark with 4C hair and they have 3A hair. I'm just keeping it real. But the matching was perfect. And all of them, even the other girls, they looked like they were related. And in my opinion, we all know um, Will Smith was the lightest one in the film. But he was the executive producer. And what I did like is that they did put makeup on him a little bit to just darken his skin somewhat. But he didn't do the whole, like, you know, caricature thing. And if you look at the behind the scenes takes of the film... Serena tells him, you really did the accent pretty well. For the most part, you do sound like my father, but, and you don't see the butt. And then they got to also meet the girls. The girls got to meet them. And it was just a wonderful piece. And the house where they filmed the movie, that is the actual house where the Williams sisters grew up. And if I'm not mistaken, that house is a landmark and it's a museum. I could be wrong about the museum part, but it's a landmark. And the beds are still there. They still have the wallpaper. And, you know, whenever you're an icon or when somebody becomes an icon, anything that is representative of the beginnings of that person is saved. Like the Jackson's Homes, 2300 Jackson Street, that's a museum. People could come there and visit. It's a tourist attraction and they have to keep everything the same. Because that's how iconic they are as a group. And in my opinion, 
They are an American success story. They are the American success story since the Jackson 5. And, you know, what I thought was the most wonderful thing about it is that they come from the 90s. I grew up in that era. I know that era, like the back of my hand, the back of my neck, my back, my ankles and everything. That was a phenomenal era. But it was also a time when the media were trying to erase ADOS and FDA identity. They were really trying to put the damper on it and pretty much state that we're finished, we're through, you know, after everything that they done for us, there's nothing that they could do that we were a helpless group of people. So you have these two girls coming out of this place called Compton, who not only defy the odds, but they conquer the world through the sport of tennis. And this man who has meager education, who was abused as a child, mentally, physically, and racially, for that matter, creates global icons. And that's the message behind it. You know, we as ADOS and FBA, we are phenomenal, okay? And I hope that you listen to the beginning, middle, and end to hear this message. We are phenomenal. You know, you can put us in any situation. We don't break. Collectively, we don't. Individually, yeah, you know, you have some crafts. Like Betty Strickland, the neighbor, she was a broken woman. That's why she did not like Venus and Serena's father. Because she didn't have a man in her life. And her daughter was a failure. She was out on the streets. God knows doing whatever. She couldn't build a Serena nor Venus. And she only had one child. Only one. But they had five. And Orvisine reminded her, I got five daughters. I got five. And all of them are on a honor roll. All of them are doing good in school. And all of them are going to be somebody. And all of them did. You know, even though Yatunde did, you know, unfortunately, you know, pass away young. She became a nurse as well as a business owner. And she was a, she owned a nail salon and she was the personal assistant to Serena. You had um, the other daughter. I can't think of her name at the moment because she got a long name. She's a web designer. And Isha is a lawyer. And she is the one who brokered the deal to have this movie be made. She's a lawyer for her sisters. So you see how what happens when you put not only education first, but when you make your children work hard and, you know, you you have them out there focused and you make sure they're not thinking about the streets. You put them in their books. You have them go to church because they're Jehovah's Witnesses. They go to the Kingdom Hall. They were going to the Kingdom Hall. You also, you know, have them to have extracurricular activities. And also, more importantly, you keep a cohesive family unit with not just a mother, but also a father. Because that's very important as well. And especially for ADOs, FBAs, and even Blacks as a whole, worldwide. And that's something that the powers that be do not like to see a strong black man leading the household and the family. Because what happens is that you create multiple Venuses and Serenas. As well as Kobe Bryant's, you know, even Tiger Woods. Because they all came up at that time. You create phenomenal people. Phenomenal black people who are black that the world sees as just simply phenomenal. And with that being said, it's your girl, Miss Anna Little Cole. I want to take the time out to say thank you for listening to this review. I'm going to do more re- movie reviews, but I want to say I apologize in advance before. And I apologize again for mixing up Serena and Venus. We say Serena a lot. I don't mean it. And I'm not a person that do reviews, if you know this. I don't do. I think this is my first movie review in years or maybe my first one. But. I am a person that want to do this more often, so let me know. This was long. It wasn't intended to, but I tend to talk a lot. And this is Miss Anna Little Cole. I'm signing out. Thank you for listening, and have a wonderful day.